Hey, so I'm going to talk about the labor revolt of Magic the Gathering of the professional players and hindsight. So hindsight is always 2020. Obviously, they in kind of made better. I don't want to say better off because they there was a lot of stress. But essentially, the Platinum Pros got back their fees, their eleven thousand dollar fee a year, and they they also got another fifty thousand bonus, I guess, if you will prize support at um, at the premier event. So they got a increase in prize support and they also got to keep their appearance fee. But, you know, in exchange for probably the most stressful 24 hours of any Platinum Pro's life. Well, let's talk about labor as related to judges and pros. So judges are, they, they, it's hard for me to not to say that they're employees. They're employees of somebody, right? If that's the tournament organizer, if that's the Wizards of the Coast, obviously Wizards of the Coast cannot run its pro tour even without judges. And GPs are run by organizers, which Wizards of the Coast has its hands all over. It's, you know, the branding, right? If they didn't want you to use their branding and they didn't give you a GP, you're not going to be able to run a GP. So they did get to decide which companies get to run GPs, which in turn, those companies have to hire judges. Hire is a loose term. I always liked the idea of the judge packets. I felt that was pretty good compensation and not every judge sells those packets. And that's what it is. I think it's actually amazing because a judge friend of mine has all the promos he's ever received and including the Teresa Nielsen lands and all of these amazing promos. And he talks about, oh, I, I judged at this event, that event, this event, that event. And he has a good time. So not everyone sells a packet of promo. Some of the people, some of the judges I know, keep them for sentimental reasons. Now that's where I'm going to go with the pros and the judges, where Wizard of the Coast feels like you as a pro should be playing this game for free. You should market this game for free. You should do all of X, Y, Z to get a greater player base, give us more money, generate more income for Wizard of the Coast for free or for a very low pay. I watched that documentary and it's kind of, these are the highest level, the, the highest platinum pros. These are the best magic players in our game today. And they make the most money, but they're still not making very much money. And that's surprising because if you look at any, if you look at chess even, or you look at any comparable hobby, League of Legends is not comparable, but I'm gonna use it as an example. They make six figure incomes, right? Those players, they, the teams. And when you look at Magic and you look at the prize support, you look at just the sponsorship, like TSM is sponsored, Team Solar Made is sponsored by Geico and like Red Bull. Like the, all of these sponsorships from large companies, Intel, like the Intel Master Series, like Intel will host a tournament and then give the prize. That doesn't exist in our hobby. Um, in our hobby, and it, it shows because the best players are barely making enough income to survive. And then the Wizards of Coast's concept is to take away that amount of money, that the limited amount of money to begin with, that they began with, and just cut. Because I can tell you, although they didn't cut this time because the negative pressure, the neg negative pressure, PR was very bad, they will cut eventually in the future. Um, this is where they're going. They're not going to continue to support pros. I, if I, I, the writing is on the wall, right? It's very clear that they don't feel like a pro Magic player should even exist because they made that statement saying that the Platinum Pro was supposed to help pro Magic players have a living standard. And then it wasn't doing that, so our Solution is to get rid of it. I would say the solution is actually much more simple. It's to reformat it, to find outside sponsorships. If, you know, Red Bull, Monster, Hot Pockets, I mean, Mountain Dew, uh, I, I don't, there's plenty of sponsorship. Just go look at, you know, the foods, Little Debbie's, Look at the food that the game store is selling. The lo your game store is selling at FNM Magic, Friday Night Magic, and those could all be sponsorships. 
I, you know, if I owned a manga company, I would sponsor it. I'd be like, oh yeah, this is kind of the same. I would do it. If I owned a car shop, well, I guess I kind of, yeah, that's kind of weird. Because they're already doing that. But, man, they got, they have, you know, like, Witch of the Coast, you got to change, right? You got to change with the times. Uh, and you, you got to look around and see what other people are doing. If League of Legends can get um, Intel, they can get uh, Red Bull, they can get Monster, they can get... Um, Geico, Geico Auto Insurance. You can get somebody. They might not be might not be the best somebody to begin with. Maybe a loot crate. Maybe loot crate. <laughs> anyway, bye guys.